What is going on, everybody? It's Nick Payne with another episode of Face Mask Fantasy. Before I begin, just want to let everybody know our 2021 Shallow League redraft draft plan is available on our website. You can go to our page, facemaskpod.com, enter your email address, and you will get a downloadable link to the plan, which is 100% free. There's player breakdowns, positional breakdowns by tiers, guys I'm targeting, guys I think you should consider fading. Plenty of information for you in there to attack your draft and come away with a solid foundation for 2021. Check it out. Now, on to today's topic. We are continuing to shift our coverage here as the season inches ever closer. We've been doing a lot of rookie and young player breakdowns. We're now gearing up for the 2021 season, and a lot of our coverage will be specifically catered to redraft. And it wouldn't be preseason fantasy without some rankings. Our top 10 quarterbacks are live on our channel now. You can check those out up today. I am taking a look at my top 10 running backs for the 2021 season. These are my rankings, guys I feel good about, guys I might consider fading even in the first round. So let's go ahead and dive right in. What is up, everybody? Thanks for joining me. Here's my top 10 for 2021. Number one, I'm sticking with the consensus. Nothing crazy here. Christian McCaffrey is my overall RB1 heading into 2021. Simply put, the guy's a cheat code. One of only a select few backs that is a threat for 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving. Should maintain a large role in the passing game. 2019's overall RB1. He has fresh legs after not really playing much in 2020. And even still in those three games that he did play, he averaged over 25 fantasy points per game. I've said enough. There's not much time you really need to spend on this. There's no real reason to overthink or get too cute here. Christian McCaffrey is the obvious slam dunk choice for the first overall pick in pretty much every draft format. Number two, staying in the NFC South with Alvin Kamara. Last year's overall RB1 has 80 catches in every season he's played in the NFL. The New Orleans pass catching room, little bit of a mess, especially considering the Michael Thomas debacle that's going on right now. So despite the QB change, I'm all in on Kamara to continue to maintain heavy usage and a heavy workload in this offense. Not worried about him one bit. I think the team leans on him heavily this season, both running it and catching it. Still only 26 and hasn't missed a ton of time due to injury. I expect another heavy workload for Kamara and I have no problem slating him as my second overall running back for the season. Number three, might just be considered all reliable at this point. Time goes fast in the NFL, especially for running backs. Ezekiel Elliott is my RB3 for the 2021 season. Maybe a bit of a shock to have him this high after the 2020 season that he had, which by Zeke's standards could be considered on the surface, on the surface, a little bit of a disappointment. But everyone forgets, Zeke had 100 total yards and at least one touchdown in four of the five games that he played with Dak Prescott. Now, once Dak got hurt, the Cowboys' entire offense and season went in the tank. And Zeke had a couple of fumbling issues last year. Although, to be fair, he's put the ball on the ground at least five times in three of his four full seasons. Now, he didn't lose all of those fumbles, but it still happened. Wasn't stopping us from taking him top three before. Now Zeke's quarterback is back healthy and the Cowboys get back multiple offensive linemen this year who were also lost due to injury in 2020. And that contract Zeke is still under, it's gonna do a lot of dictating as far as usage and workload. I think Elliott remains a lock for bell cow work and he stayed mostly healthy. Not to mention he's had 50 catches in each of his past three seasons. Most drafts he goes by the fifth overall pick. I have no problem taking him top three if McCaffrey and Kamara are gone. Number four, everyone else's consensus RB2 this year is Dalvin Cook. He's at four for me, but we definitely saw his full potential in 2020. 1,900 total yards, 17 total touchdowns. Another season with 40 or more catches. Had some injury issues early in his career, but has been pretty healthy his past two seasons. The Vikings haven't changed their offense a bit, so it's fair to assume they're going to continue to prominently feature Cook. Lock him in as a top five pick. A lot of people have him going second overall to McCaffrey. I just like Kamara and Elliott a little bit more, but Dalvin Cook is absolutely at the top of the top of the conversation. Moving down to number five, might just be the steal of the first round. He might have to shake an injury risk label now at this point, but he remains the most overall talented player at the position. I'm talking about Saquon Barkley. Yes, there are some injury concerns coming into this season. No, he doesn't have a great supporting cast to play with, but he proved he didn't need that in his first two seasons in the NFL. So he missed 
pretty much all of last season due to an ACL injury that could limit him coming into 2021. There's definitely still a little bit of concern there, but the Giants activated him off the pup list. So that's got to be a good sign. Yes, right now, Barkley is limited to individual work, but the Giants aren't going to just throw him into live drills in joint practices during the preseason. Sure, maybe Saquon doesn't get bell cow work in the first couple of weeks, but once he's healthy, once he's 100%, you know who's getting all of the work in the Giants backfield. Saquon averages over 100 total yards per game for his career. And he's a lock for high usage in the passing game. Don't overthink it. I usually try to tell you to find healthy players to go into your season with, but Saquon is different. Swing for the fences in this scenario. He makes sense in the middle of the first round. If he were coming off of a healthy season, he's in the conversation for overall RB1. I like taking a chance like this. That's the top half. Moving on down the list. Number six is a guy I expect most people to have higher than I do. I can never seem to get on the Derrick Henry train, but all he keeps doing is proving me wrong. So can't drop him any further than six, given what he's done the past couple of seasons. But I'm still a little concerned for Henry, including playoffs. The past two years, Henry has accumulated over 800 touches. 800. That's unheard of in today's NFL. It's pretty unheard of no matter what era of NFL you look back to. Yes, Henry is different. He's a linebacker playing running back. And the Titans want to run the ball, maybe more than the average NFL offense. Having a guy like Derrick Henry makes that understandable. But these types of workloads often do catch up to players at some point. With the workload he's expected to get, Derrick Henry remains a safe first round pick. But I gotta fade him a little bit this year. I am much more wary of guys just coming off of big workloads than guys who aren't. And Henry is coming off back-to-back seasons of heavy workloads. Three straight 400-touch seasons? That's rare air. Again, not just in today's NFL, but in NFL history. Maybe Henry's the ultimate outlier when it comes to this kind of stuff. But if he is, I'm likely to witness it with him on somebody else's fantasy team, not my own. Look, if I'm wrong, salute to you, Derrick Henry. He becomes the definition of a bell cow as far as I'm concerned. But probably won't have many shares of him once again in 2021. Moving down to number seven. I keep propping up these pass catching running backs, but they're the difference makers when it comes to tier breaks. Talking about Los Angeles Chargers running back, Austin Eckler. Eckler's been steady climbing up my rankings this offseason, and now I have him over my guy who I called a dark horse to finish as the overall RB1, Nick Chubb. Bottom line is Eckler caught 92 passes in 2019, and he was on pace for similar results before he got hurt in 2020. Seemingly ready to go for 2021. And he's the clear top option in the Chargers' backfield, no matter what the role is. And Justin Herbert clearly trusts him. He looked Eckler's way a ton when the two of them were on the field. Chargers' offensive line was pretty bad in 2020, so if they improve even marginally, that elevates the prospects of the entire offense. Not that that matters much for Eckler. Good running backs can overcome bad offensive lines. It happens all the time. So if you have a first-round pick closer to the end of the round, I think Eckler is an excellent target if you prefer still getting a running back over maybe some of the top receiver options who just might be available. Especially in half PPR and full PPR leagues, Eckler's value is going to be even more so. And if he can improve on his career best of 11 touchdowns, he's being drafted top five next year. Book it. Number eight, the guy I just mentioned as my potential dark horse to finish as the overall RB1. Nick Chubb. Now, my tune might be changing a little bit on that stance, but I still love him for this year. Here's the deal. Chubb finished as an RB1 in 2020, and he played the fewest number of games of all the other RB1s. So basically, he's an RB1 with room to grow. Yes, he's stunted by the best backup in Kareem Hunt. Hunt siphons a lot of catches and a lot of goal line work. But when Chubb returned from injury later in the 2020 season, the Browns rode him. Cleveland has one of the best rosters in the NFL. They're a team that wants to run the ball on offense, and they boast a very strong defense. There should be plenty of situations for Cleveland this year where they are either winning the game or it's neutral game script. That favors the run game. It bodes well for Chubb. He's not as valuable in half PPR or full PPR leagues because, again, Hunt is going to take catches away from him. But he's a lock for 250 carries with upside for more than that. I think the way the Browns are constructed sets Chubb up for potential huge success in 2021. Even though he's playing in a committee, He's as safe of a low-end first-round pick as I think you can get. Wrapping up here shortly with my final two backs of my top 10. Trust me, this guy at number nine would be higher if he didn't suffer a hamstring injury earlier in camp. Green Bay Packers running back Aaron Jones. All he's done the past two years, 
RB5 in 2020, RB2 in 2019. Hopefully the hamstring injury is minor, but you have to be fair. These injuries can and often do linger into the regular season. So I will say proceed with caution, but absolutely keep an eye on this news. If Jones can shake the hamstring injury, he's easily worth a pick as soon as the middle of the first round. Never gets a major workload, but Jones comes through on amazing and remarkable efficiency. Averages over five yards a carry for his career. Threat for 50 catches any given year. And Jamal Williams is gone. I expect Aaron Jones' work in the passing game to go up. I will quickly mention I do like A.J. Dillon this year as a handcuff, especially if the hamstring injury lingers for Aaron Jones. But from an efficiency perspective, Jones is one of the elite players at the position. He could absolutely climb higher than nine before the preseason is over. If he's healthy, he leapfrogs guys like Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler for me. Again, monitor his injury status. Draft him if he's healthy. Rounding out the top 10, and this was a difficult decision. I love some of the guys here, but ultimately I had to make somebody 11 and 12. But I'm going to go with one of my favorites, a second year running back with plenty of room still to grow. Washington football team's Antonio Gibson. Yeah, he's on the thumbnail, so you expected him to show up on the rankings at some point. Maybe you expected him to be higher. I wish I could put him higher. Probably have to wait one more year for that, but I do think his ADP climbs over maybe some of the older guys at the position by 2022. As a rookie, Gibson averaged 4.7 yards per carry and caught 36 passes. He didn't even see that much work on third down because Washington eased the load on his plate because he was converting from wide receiver to running back. So he didn't see as much receiving work as he could have because he was learning the position on the fly. Now, he was hampered by a turf toe injury that he suffered late in the 2020 season, and apparently he's still dealing with it a little bit. So there might be some pain management from Gibson this year as far as dealing with the turf toe. But if he's able to overcome it, I expect his usage in this offense as a whole to go up. Washington's offense should be a bit better in 2021. Yes, Ryan Fitzpatrick does present an upgrade from the likes of Dwayne Haskins and Alex Smith. The offense sustains drives. Gibson's scoring opportunities go up. His opportunities for catching passes goes up. I think if he capitalizes on these opportunities, he is an easy RB1. And Washington boasts a strong defense. Anytime a team has a good defense, that bodes well for the running game because there's going to be more, at worst, neutral game script situations. Although if Gibson's third down work and pass catching role goes up, that might not matter too much. Remember, Ron Rivera is the head coach of this team and oversaw a massive jump in Christian McCaffrey's usage in McCaffrey's second year. I expect this trend to continue with Gibson. 250 touches seems completely reasonable, and I think Gibson erases the likes of J.D. McKissick as a pass catching threat. Gibson proves to be a worthy selection at the top of the second round, and his ADP climbs well into the first round by 2022. I think he's an excellent talent waiting to explode. There's my 10. Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, Ezekiel Elliott, Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Antonio Gibson. That's my rankings. Now I want to hear from you. Put your thoughts in the comment section below, whether you agree or disagree with my rankings, or if you want to share rankings of your own. Let's talk. Till then, this is Nick Payne with Face Mask Fantasy, producing fantasy content for you each and every day. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening.